Hey everybody, Mark here, and I'm going to do a build review of the original Prusa i3 MK2. In this review, I'm going to talk about the build of the machine, what I liked about it, what can be improved upon, as well as tricks and tips while I was building the machine. So first thing is this machine took me five hours to make. Online it takes it says three to four hours, um, but this machine took me five hours and I think that's a realistic time frame to build the machine. Give yourself at least a half a day or even a full day if you want to really start printing parts in the machine. The first thing that I want to say what's amazing about this machine is they give you this build book that is really, really detailed. I mean, this, this book is great. Um, they also have an online um, build instructions that's even better because people on the forum will comment um, in areas that they like and they and they did not like um, building building the parts and maybe any tricks. So the first thing when you're building this this assembly is obviously go by the book and it's pretty user friendly um, to build this to build this kit. But uh, when you're building the Y carriage, that is actually this part down here. When you're building it, uh, you'll notice, and we'll flip this over. You'll notice when you're putting in this little orange piece. You'll notice there's two screws, one here and one here, and they go into the bed. The ones on the side actually screw in much better right here, but these are a little bit looser. Do not worry. Uh, when you're almost done with the assembly, you actually put the bed on and these screws drive into the bed. So that was the first thing when I was assembling it. Um, next thing was when you're actually doing this belt right here, the trick is to tighten the belt is get some pliers and when you're down here, just get some pliers. And let's see if I can get to this angle. You get pliers and you actually will grab this belt right here and pull it tight. What I've learned is pull, here it is. Oh, what I've learned is you, if you can hold this, this base, you can grab the belt and pull it a lot better and a lot tighter. This will take some time. There is no magic to tighten the belt. So do not worry, this is almost right at the beginning of the assembly. Do not worry, this does take some time. If you can't do it right at the beginning, do not worry. Um, you can do it at the end. So that is uh, the belt. In, uh, when, this, when you put the belt on, you'll notice that there is play with, with these bolts, uh, or with these nuts, uh, that, that you kind of can adjust it. I would highly suggest to kind of loosen these up and when you're moving the belt back, when you're moving the bed back and forth, you'll notice the belt will move back and forth and just kind of match it up. But it is really important when you're matching it up to make sure it goes through. Make sure it goes through this area right here. Try to make it as centered as possible. So that is with the, the Y. Um, some other areas that were Oh, oh, in the back, this will be your first kind of, once you get the motors and everything together, it will say, hey, zip tie these, this motor and, and route it through here and this end stop and route it through. Don't do this yet. Um, I would wait to the end to do all your wire harnessing. So wait to the end before you do that, as well as when you're installing all of these end stops or if you're tapping right into the plastic, it is really, really hard. Uh, I was not able to get any of my screws to tap in, uh, so I'd highly suggest to get a drill bit that was, I think these are M2s, uh, get a little bit smaller than an M2 drill bit and drill out the holes first. Um, I, would, I would really like to see the Prusa team actually drill those holes um, because some are really tight and you, can, you physically cannot get screws into them. So uh, that, is, that is with all of the heads. I know you guys might be worrying that that they use a lot of zip ties. Prusa loves the zip ties. Um, but you'll notice in all the beds, there's zip ties right here. And you're like, well, that's how my, my Y end is actually supported is on zip ties. And that's not true. What actually happens is this bar pops into this plastic piece. And all this does is just keeps it down. Um, but it, it snaps in. This is really this zip tie here. Zip, zip ties all around are actually just safeties I guess so so, so this won't pop up um, let's go into the 
Let's go into the X and Z axis right over here. You might notice, maybe you can see right here, you might notice my bearing doesn't go all the way through. And it's actually a different bearing than what it calls out. When I was assembling this area, I had an issue with my Z bearings. And the Z bearings, they're actually all the ball bearings are pretty standard. There's these little um, Chinese ball bearings, um, but there's one that goes on top and there's one that goes on bottom. But I noticed once I push them in, oh, and it's also really tight to push them in. So when you guys are working in this area, make sure that you get the screwdriver that's provided and you actually can shove it in and actually twist the plastic and you can fit the ball bearing in a little bit better. Um, but also there's, there's, because this is the printed on the bed, it's a little bit, has kind of a little bit of a ridge right around this edge. So just go and actually clean, um, even with a knife, and actually just cut a little bit back of that material. But I had an issue when I put the ball bearings in. Um, I always test them before I put a threaded rod in. I'll actually will move a threaded rod. But when they went in, like let's say that's the threaded rod, they were not aligned right. So they were like, and I had a big issue. Um, luckily, I had some extra long ball bearings in stock and uh, they're not as long as they're not as long as those but this is a, a one unit and I found that it works out much better uh, especially in the Z axis so I just switched it out and put it at the top have not had any print issues have printed over a hundred hours in the machine um, with no problem so that is that is a mod I did to the machine um, kind of had to do it while I was building the machine because I noticed, well, one of the sides, maybe it was this side over here, it, it didn't have any issues, but I said, well, if I'm gonna switch them out, let me do that. Um, next thing, uh, for the extruder, the extruder, or this whole assembly, you're gonna build the whole machine in maybe two, two and a half hours. You get to this, uh, you get to this part, and it is so many little pieces. This is, this is a piece of art, a piece of art. Um, there are so many different little pieces that go inside of it. Um, read the instructions. I did notice when I was building this, some of the instructions are a little bit different, um, but just look at the pictures and you'll be able to figure it out. Um, one thing that, that I thought was kind of funny um, building, building this assembly was this, this fan over here. So Prusa loves zip ties and, oh, he loves zip ties, but this fan has four screws holding in this little dinky little this little fan it has four screws going into it and I thought it was kind of funny that you know we're, we're, we have zip ties on some areas but the fan oh it has to have four screws going into it um, another thing is make sure you listen to the cable routings about where the cables go for example these cables for this motor as well as this fan um, tuck behind this area and will come out the backside same thing on the other side. You'll see this is the blower fan to actually cool off the plastic. The other one was for to cool off um, the extruder. But you'll see these route around and go out. And make sure, uh, it, especially in the instructions, I'll talk about actually this piece going up and around. And you'll see there's a little bit of catch right there to go out the back side. Um, so you're going to have a lot of wires coming out of this extruder. Um, let's go to the back side a little bit and talk about this. There are, here we go, there are three main screws to hold this extruder assembly um, in. One, two, and that one's coming out for some reason. Three, maybe I'll tighten that one up. Um, these are all different lengths. Every one of them is a different length. Um, so look at your book and your one for your one to one scales. I don't know, here, here's one of the back, but make sure you put them to the one and one scales i did notice when i was assembling some of the areas that the hardware was not in the bag so i had to go to the spare bag to pull some of it out um but this was very this wasn't really that common uh, to have that issue but again everything is zip tied in place um and it's a really nice neat setup um when you get down to this area right here this is where all the wires merge this is there's wires here wires here as well as wires coming out of the bottom. This is a slight nightmare. So, so take your time. If you wanna make a breaking point, um, when you're assembling this machine, 
go get some coffee, relax, and then come and do this. There is a piece of filament that goes, or a piece of, I guess it's nylon, that actually supports this cable harness. And, uh, and that's great because it actually gives a strain relief. But this is going to take you some time to actually do all of these wires. There's probably 10 sets of wires that come and merge into this one main bundle. So if you can have some time to take a break, this is the time I'd say to take the break. But let's talk a little bit about cable management. In this machine, there are a lot and lot of wires. Maybe we can look down the bottom. But here we go, turn it sideways. There are a lot of wires. Look at all those wires here. Maybe we can, there we go. There are a ton of wires that come out here. So take your time. When you're doing this, take your time. All these wires, take your time. And I would suggest to not zip tie any of the wires down till you have them all in place. So if you can see, I'm, I'm very detailed oriented. I wanna have all my wires zip tied together and make it all look really, really pretty. Um, one other thing, uh, when you're building this assembly, you'll notice um, in the assembly instructions, these two plugs will actually uh, call out where to plug them in. Um, I guess they had some issues and if these go in backwards um, and plug in the board wrong, you could fry it out. So the team has really pokey up the solution. Pokey is a term to air proof it. They've actually already plugged these, these, uh, these wires in um, into the assembly as well as they ID'd the wires. Um, looking at the book, it's kind of confusing which wire goes under and over. I want to say one is over, two is under, but look at the picture, they'll be faded out. Um, you'll completely understand. But, um, so some other, other modifications I made to this machine is I use these nylon, um, I call them snake skins, um, but I use these instead of the ones that are provided. I really don't like these stretchy plastic. I think they look really cheap. Now they're nice that you got it. You can take wires in and out really quick and add more wires. But my goal is I never have to change anything on this machine. If I do, I'll just take these out. Um, I'll put a description. You can buy these in McMaster car. You even can buy them online, but they are, they're awesome. So you can put all the wires through and you can see that this is kind of, it's, it's a really nice mesh that you can put wires inside and they're very flexible and they're uh, abrasion resistant. So that was another modification I made to the machine or change. And I, and I personally like these a lot better. I think they look more professional. And uh, that's, that's about it to the machine, um, to the build part. It, again, there's, there are a lot of parts. I think it is a pretty easy machine to build. Uh, they provide you a bunch of extra hardware. You can see I have a bunch of extra zip ties. These bearings uh, actually have extra because um, uh, two, four of them go into the machine. Um, but there are a bunch of extra hardware. You will probably have to go into your spare hardware um, for the machine. Um, but the parts are really nice. The plastic parts they printed. Um, and I think it was a pretty easy build. I did build a Mendel way back in the day that took days upon days. Um, again, I, I built the machine right in about five hours. So it was a little bit over what they suggested three to four. Um, but definitely give yourself a half a day to build it and a uh, full day to, to start printing on it and le learn about the machine. So, but power cable comes with this machine. This is another kind of change I made to the machine. There's a power cable that comes with the machine. That's a basically a, a cheap Chinese plug. This is, I guess, there's some, some sort of NEMA. These are, this is the plug that comes with it, that plugs in right here. And it, it, it works. Don't, you know, there's not a problem with it. There is a built-in fuse right here, so that's, that's really nice. But I don't like it sticking out so far. I think it looks really not professional. I don't understand. I mean, I, I know why you didn't come out the back because it make the machine deeper. But really, when this bed moves back, all these cables stick out regardless. So I, I'm really questioning why he came out the side here. But to combat this issue, this is, I went on Amazon. I'll provide a link to this one as well. But this is a called a left-handed plug because it goes on the left side. And you can see it, it actually goes straight back. Um, and that's where your outlets are going to be. So why... 
why not actually have a left-handed plug and it's a little bit less I think it looks more professional um, than the straight 90 plug I really like so, these videos what I'm doing uh, please give me a thumbs up it gets me motivated it gets me happy uh, to make more great videos for the online community if you have any questions please leave them below and uh, I'll release another video of actually the review of this entire machine next week stay tuned keep printing